Sublingual drops are a type of immunotherapy. And what that means is that sublingual drops, also known as sublingual immunotherapy or allergy drops, are a mixture of the actual things that you're allergic to and we put them into a dropper and you put those drops under your tongue to get your body used to those so you don't have such a vigorous reaction during your allergy season. For a patient to get sublingual immunotherapy, they first have to have allergy testing whether or not a patient's a candidate for allergy testing is kind of a discussion between the doctor and the patient about how long they've been suffering from allergies, what they've tried in the past. And if somebody's a good candidate for uh, allergy testing, then we, if they see that they are allergic to certain things in the environment, then we can uh, formulate a drop to put under their tongue to get them used to those allergens and then hopefully mitigate some of those symptoms that they have from their allergies. Some legal immunotherapy or slit therapy allergy drops are very, very common in countries in Europe, for example, and they've been used off and on in the United States, but I think that they are a convenient alternative to allergy shots, which are the mainstay in, in the United States. For every patient, the amount that they respond to allergy shots or allergy drops is a little bit different, but for the most part, I've got a lot of patients that are really happy to not have to go through shots that are able to get symptom relief from their drops. As far as the efficacy of how long the drops last, it's kind of an interesting um, concept because with things like Flonase, you really only get the response after you've built up um, a couple of weeks worth of putting in the nasal spray, and then as soon as you stop it, really the effects go away. With sublingual drops or with um, shots, they can actually last for sometimes many years after you've completed the therapy. Some people will not get response right away with the uh, drops or with the shots, and they take several months to kind of build up that immunity to the allergen. And then after they've built up the immunity, then sometimes after a few years, they may back off and try a, a going to every other week or something like that. And then we've had patients that do shots for five years and then get results for 15 years after that. And so um, that's one of the nice things about allergy shots and allergy drops is that they can last for many years after we've stopped therapy. Allergy shots or allergy drops such as sublingual immunotherapy are best for those patients that are really affected by the allergens. They know what seasons hit them. They say, oh, whenever September comes around and the ragweed season is really bad, then I know my allergies act up and every day I'm having to take multiple uh, rounds of antihistamines like Zyrtec, Allegra. My eyes are really itchy. My nose is itchy. I'm sneezing all the time. Those types of patients are excellent candidates for getting allergy testing and then doing drops down the line. One of the things that we emphasize at St. Louis University is that if somebody has a pet at home that they're allergic to, that we don't want to get rid of the pet because we know that's part of the family. And so offering allergy testing to see if you're allergic to one of those pets and then allergy shots and drops is a perfect example of somebody that would be a great candidate for doing this and be able to uh, play with Fido and still not worry about um, sneezing and itching, uh, runny nose, all of those symptoms that we get from the allergies. There are some patients that are not good candidates for um, doing um, allergy shots or allergy testing. And some of those patients may be on a heart medication such as a beta blocker, and they're not good candidates because of the re reaction that we see between um, the beta blocker and some of the reversal medications that we have to use for allergy uh, situations.